Welcome to First Post. This is our inaugural Defense Summit, Future Forward. Now we have with us Professor Nagendra Pathak. He's the head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at IIT Roorkee. Hello, Professor. Happy to have you here. So, Professor, we believe that your department, one that's been active for 60 years, I believe you said, it has been contributing to the Indian defense sector. Now, could you elaborate as to the contributions of your department so far? Yeah, my department is a 60-year-old department. It was started in 1964, and this year we are completing 60th year. As far as defense sector is concerned, department has contributed enormously in the area of developing RF and microwave technology. And uh, there we have developed uh, technology which is transferred directly to the uh, defense sector, defense, def defense laboratories. Some of the technology which I had personally developed uh, was one uh, that uh, detection of heartbeats and respiration rate of a person from a distance, for example, two meters, which can be uh, having its uh, uh, impact in defense sector, especially uh, during uh, the war, etc., whether a soldier, uh, wounded soldier, is uh, so, uh, soldier is uh, alive or not, so so that quickly we can uh, 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 go for a search and rescue operation. Apart from that, uh, some of the front-end technology we develop, for example, antennas, power amplifiers, and they are also transmitters. They are also transferred to the uh, various defense laboratories. Recently, we started one more activity in order to. Uh, directly focus the problem of 5G and 6G research, and that is a uh, master's program in terahertz communication and sensing. This is a very, very amb ambitious program where we have allocated uh, four sponsored seats for DRDO uh, and defense also. And uh, we are directly focusing uh, millimeter wave uh, and uh, above 100 gigahertz technology so that the developed technology can be used for development of broadband communication and high-speed uh, communication for future networks. So now, sir, the technology you mentioned, 5G, 6G, this comes for the average person. Uh, you think of that, you think of normal cell phone communications. How, how easy is it to develop technology for the defense sector and then have it utilized for the civilian sector? See, uh, as far as 6G technology is concerned, the uh, main objective of 6G technology is the integration of human uh, uh, body, terrestrial network, and digital world. So when it is integrated, so uh, you can uh, easily understand that large number of sensors, they are going to be integrated with the human body, and uh, all the data need to be connected th uh, through the, uh, the terrestrial network. So that is going to generate huge amount of data, which cannot be manually processed. So therefore, it finds application of AI and machine learning, huge application of AI and machine learning. This same uh, approach is very, very useful as far as defense is concerned, because a lot of things, they are happening in terms of uh, new, new kind of wars, et cetera, where uh, quick data processing, that is essential uh, in the defense sector also. So this is the backbone of uh, this technology which is used for uh, civilian as well as for uh, defense applications. And so, as you said, technology, 6G, 5G, it can be used for both civilian and defense purposes, the same backbone, the same infrastructure. Now, how, then what differentiates this technology? How do we prevent it from, let's say, being used, misused rather? Yeah, uh, any technology can be misused, that is fine, but uh, see, uh, a lot of encoding approach and preventive approach, they, they are available and they are basically introduced when the same technology which is, uh, say, developed for commercial purpose or civilian applications, it is designated to use for defense sector also. So those provisions, they are there, those protocols, they are there, they will be introduced so that it can be uh, safely used for defense and it cannot be data cannot be leaked information cannot be leaked okay. so those provisions they need to be introduced and basically those who are working in the area of defense sector they uh, take care of that particular part thank you so much professor thank you, thank you so much for joining us